Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to your Energy Booster podcast, the place where we journey together to become the best version of ourselves so we can live according to our God-given purpose. This is, once again, Janice Padilla, your host and guide through this journey. And in today's episode, we will explore how the profound internal changes we've discussed this season manifest in our lives. And we will draw inspiration from Galatians 5, 22 to 23, where Paul talks about the fruit of the spirit. Let us begin by reading Galatians 5, 16 to 26, because we are not just going to focus on the fruit of the spirit, but we will also talk about the whole picture because sometimes um, we don't have these clarity in what are the, the, the enemies or the fruits of the flesh, the enemies of the spirit, what are the things that we have to die for or what do we need to do? in order to walk with Jesus and to bear the fruit of the spirits. So let us begin and let us dissect this one by one. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. So we have two components in our lives, the flesh and the spirit. Thus, we are being commanded that in order to follow Jesus, we have to die, to die our our desires by, or the desires by our flesh and walk in the spirit. And then 17 says, For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Verse 17 is giving us a clear thought about the spirit and the flesh they are not they don't agree with each other completely and then 18 says but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law and what it means is when you walk by the spirit you have freedom and you all we all want freedom that is what we desire and yet what we don't know is the real freedom is found when we walk by the spirit and not by the desires of our flesh 19 says now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurity, sensuality, 20 says idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits for anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the things like this. So it is telling us just the example and you know it says things like this. So there are more desires of the flesh that these 
um, verse is our verses are telling us, and it's very, very clear. And yet, if we read the Bible and we are not in the spirit, or you know, we are being blinded or being blindfolded. Because I can still remember that I have read this before, and yet I did not understand because I was in the flesh, too much in the flesh. I was following my own earthly desires than, than you know, crucifying that old self and dying to my sins and walk rather than walking with God in the spirit. And let's continue in 21, okay? I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do not or who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I will tell you, it will make sense um, after I read all these verses, okay? Because I don't wanna, I don't wanna say it now or spill um, the goods now, because it's it's also here in the Bible, and I'm not just making it up, okay? Okay. And then twenty two says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, and it continues in 23, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. It is very clear. So if you're walking by the Spirit, then you are bearing these fruits. And you will know when you are because you're not being judgmental anymore. But you're more loving, you are having or experiencing joy despite of the trials and tribulations, despite of life's struggles and imperfections. And you have peace despite of, of doubts or of uncertainties. And you know God will supply all your needs and you have nothing to worry about. You have patience and you're not in a hurry. When you have patience, you are just at ease and letting God work in your life. And you don't hurry on things that you want now. Rather, you want to wait for what God has in store for you. And kindness. No matter what other people um, do to you or treat you, you treat them with, with kindness and you pray for them, just like how you pray for the people that you love, right? You pray for your enemies, you, you pray for your opponents, and you just so kind and caring to them even if they don't value you and even if they don't treat you well goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control you know you just don't you know when you feel offended you just don't open up a fight you just don't Give it away and and be angry, but you're so filled with control because you know that God is in control and you just chill there, my friend, and you just don't get mad right away because, yeah, there are th two things or there, are, you know, there are things that we can't control and that's how people will treat us. But one thing for sure, what we can control is how we react to how they treat us. And when we are bearing that fruit of self-control, we take hold of what we can do. And rather, to, rather than hating on them 
or getting mad at them, we love them in return. And yeah, again, such things. There is no law. When you bear the fruit of the Spirit, you are free. Now let's continue with 24. And those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. When you believe that Jesus is God and receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, the master of your life, the CEO of your life, then you crucify the flesh or your flesh and all its earthly desires. That, my friend, is the key to success and happiness and goodness and love and joy and mercy and all these fruits that you can bear when you walk with the Spirit. Because it's no longer you that you follow. It's no longer yourself that you follow. But you have God. You have Jesus. And you don't make a move until he says, go. If we live by the Spirit, or let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So, the Bible is saying it over and over again. We can't be conceited. We don't have anything to boast. Because it is not through our works that we bear this fruit, but through Jesus Christ. We cannot transform our lives by our own will or our own power. We cannot. That's very impossible. But through Christ, all things are possible. When we anchor our life to Him, when we declare Him to be the Lord of our life, then it's when His power starts to work in our lives. And when we let Him work in our life, the impossible becomes possible and that my friend is the secret to real transformation it's when we surrender completely our lives to Jesus Christ and let's continue with this episode with practical steps. What can we do daily? What can we do? How can we achieve this transformation and live by the Spirit every day and choose to live by the Spirit every day rather than our earthly desires? It starts with intentionality, my friend. When we choose God, when we receive and believe that He is our Lord. Every day we are faced with choices that test our commitment to growth. It is in these moments, big and small, that we have the opportunity to reflect the change that has occurred within us. It takes a lot of self-awareness because when we are not aware we do not know what we are doing and we are not being intentional. So let's consider practical, practical ways to live out these virtues every day. For example, 
showing kindness and patience in all our interactions. That's when we bear the fruit. Choosing peace over conflict or practicing self-control in moments of temptation. These actions are the tangible expressions of our internal transformation, the visible fruits of our spiritual journey. This week, I encourage you to focus on one fruit of the Spirit. It can be love. It can be kindness. It can be self-control. Reflect on how you can embody this virtue in your interactions decisions, and thoughts, whether it's showing unconditional love, extending forgiveness, and embracing joy in the simple moments, in the simple moments, let this virtue guide your actions throughout the week. And I'm telling you, this will transform your relationships, how you see things, how you interact with people, how you treat them, and not only that, this will improve your relationship with Jesus Christ, which is the important, important thing that we have to chase every day. We we'll, we chase God, we chase Jesus, and we let all these things chase us. As we conclude uh, um, on these series on transformation, remember that the journey doesn't end here. Every day is an opportunity to grow, to transform, and to hear or bear the fruit in our lives and the lives of those around us. Keep nurturing your spiritual garden, my friend, and watch and watch as it flourishes and impacts the world in a beautiful and meaningful ways. Thank you so much for walking with me through this series and being here today, taking time to grow as a person, as a friend, as a wife or a husband, as a, an employee, a business owner, name it, my friend. When you grow in spirit, all these things will grow. Because as my favorite chapter in the Bible says in Psalm 1, 1 to 6, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of the mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so with the wicked. They are like shaft that the winds that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is once again Chinese Padilla. And I am so grateful to have shared this journey of transformation with you. Until next time, may your life be rich with the fruits of the Spirit and that 
May your path be illuminated by the light of growth and renewal. I love you. And don't forget to share this episode to your loved ones. God bless. Bye.